This week on Culture Q. Jojo Siwa makes Dancing with the Stars history. Lil Nas X makes an exciting announcement. And Marsha P. Johnson finally gets her due. It's Andy Luani here. And I'm Cheryl Lazar. This is Culture Q. And here are some of the top highlights this week in queer culture. The first contestants for the 30th season of Dancing with the Stars have been announced, and I'm pretty sure their casting decision will get a lot of people tuning in. Out social media star, singer, dancer, and bow icon Jojo Siwa announced that she's not just joining the cast, but she'll be making history by dancing with a same-sex partner while competing. Her Instagram post promoting the big news also got the love and support from her fans and celeb friends, from drag star Laganja Estranja and Michelle Visage to actress and former Dance Mom star Maddie Ziegler. And in an exclusive interview with Entertainment Tonight, she let us know how it all went down. When I read the email, it was like, would JoJo prefer to dance with a girl or with a boy? Uh -huh. And I was like, wait, that's an option? Yeah. I was like, let's absolutely do it. Was this like a pinch me moment for you? It was like a, whoa, I'm changing the future. Yeah. Because I have such a kid demographic and it's, it's making it acceptable, and I, I love that. While she didn't explain who her partner is going to be, she actually admitted she's a bit nervous, even though she's a competitive dancer. She shared, it's gonna help me in a way, but it is also a disadvantage, because I guarantee you the judges are 100 million percent gonna judge me harder than they do everybody else. Probably. And just as a reminder, it's been quite the year for Jojo Siwa. From coming out as a member of the LGBTQ community to revealing she's pansexual and that she's in love with girlfriend Kylie Pugh. The 18-year-old now gets to add another first to her growing resume. As she shared at the Television Critics Association Virtual Summer Press Tour, it's really special that I get to share with the world that you can love who you love, but now you can dance with who you want to dance with. And of course, you can watch Jojo Siwa and her mystery partner tango to the top when Dancing with the Stars returns on September 20th on ABC. News of a transgender teen required to strip search at an airport is bringing up many questions about the rights of transgender individuals when flying. 15-year-old Jamie Irway was traveling when, according to a lawsuit filed by her mother, her Fourth Amendment rights were violated when the TSA forced her to undergo a genital examination. And what went down is terrifying, humiliating, and unfortunately all too familiar for trans, non-binary, and non-gender conforming people. The security agent pressed a button that indicated Jamie was female email before she entered the scanner. The machine then detected an anomaly and TSA wanted to examine her even after Jamie explained she was trans. On social media, there was a flood of support for Jamie and an outpouring of similar traumatic stories. Actor Jen Richards compared the TSA's procedures to a sophisticated system of someone pressing a pink or blue button. Actor Casey Plett called their actions the TSA grope and doesn't know any trans person who hasn't experienced this at least once while traveling. Advocate Ari Denon pointed out that the TSA could have run the scanner again, but chose not to do so. Ari identifies as transmasculine, ensured that their chest often gets flagged as an anomaly too. They've had many TSA employees pat them down and inappropriately touch them in response. It's a scary reality that many in the community face, but there are steps to ensure your safety and peace of mind. Remember, screening is supposed to be non-discriminatory. The TSA pays lip service to this on their website. They also acknowledge that the trans and non-binary community might have concerns about this screening process. So if requested, they should provide you with a private pad down with a TSA agent who has the same gender presentation as you, whether or not that is currently represented on your passport or birth certificate, and with a witness or traveling companion present. You can also ask for a pat down right away instead of using a screening machine. Again, a TSA officer should not ask you personal questions about your gender, but they should have an officer who shares your gender conduct any pat downs. If they are unsure of who that might be, they should discreetly and respectfully ask you. And if you do feel violated or discriminated against, the National Center for Transgender Equality suggests that you file a report with both the TSA and the Department of Homeland Security. Each has civil rights offices that accept complaints. Hopefully in the future, no one has any fear or trauma when flying, obviously. And Jamie's fight for justice does just that for so many others. Now turning it to music, Lil Nas X has really kept our attention. From TikToks to Satan Blood merch and pole dancing, he's now releasing his studio LP album titled Montero. He made the announcement on August 25th on Twitter, saying, creating this album has been therapy for me. I've learned to let go of trying to control people's perception of who I am 
what I can do, and where I will be. I've realized the only opinion of me that matters is my own. The tweet also included a trailer of where he last left off. In July, Lil Nas X released Industry Baby, a single with a music video that features him and collaborator Jack Harlow breaking out of a prison populated by black gay men. He continues the storyline with his new trailer, where the rapper plays the role of a reporter who's letting the world know that power bottom Lil Nas X and his Caucasian friend led a prison escape this morning. And his lyrics continue to open up unapologetically honestly, and most importantly, the vulnerability of his life as a gay man. Some of his lyrics include things like, need a boy who could cuddle with me all night, keep me warm, love me long, get the sunlight. Just like everything else he's done before, he's sure to get the typical homophobic backlash. Industry Baby was partially inspired by the fallout from his much discussed Montero, Call Me By Your Name, single and music video release back in March. In the video, Lil Nas gives the devil a lap dance before he snaps Satan's neck and takes control of the underworld for himself. For promotion, he even released Satan sneakers, which contained actual drops of human blood. He was then sued by and ultimately settled with Nike, who objected his use of their sportswear for their product. But Nike wasn't the only source of complaints. Conservative political and religious figures like South Dakota Governor Christy Noem described the shoes themselves as evil and heretical. Noam tweeted, our kids are being told that this kind of product is not only okay, it's exclusive. But do you know what's more exclusive? Their God-given eternal soul. And again, the homophobia is very clear with this one. Lil Nas X recently pointed about how Tony Hawk's recent skateboards were painted in the athlete's own blood and that didn't provoke the same public outcry. He wondered if maybe they were mad for some other reason and we're very excited for the album debut and if you want to catch the entire experience the full album lp montero drops september 17th now on to the world of sports women and the issue of testosterone has been a constant battle at the olympics and now they're having to backtrack. World Athletics is now admitting that their policy of banning female athletes with high natural testosterone levels was based on a misleading study. The 2017 study claimed that women with high testosterone levels have a significant competitive advantage in many events. The scientists behind the British Journal of Sports Medicine study have now said that their work can't be considered conclusive. Okay, so basically after ruining a lot of lives and creating a ton of stigma, they're saying that there's no competitive advantage if you do have higher testosterone levels. Got it. Why does this matter, you might ask? Well, it's impacted tons of women and has been an excuse to discriminate against trans women competing too. Olympic medalists Castor Semenya and Francine Nianzaba, as well as other female athletes, could not compete in the Olympic Games because of this study. Many of these athletes were labeled as intersex, even though most identified as cisgender. Semenya even challenged this ban in the European Court of Human Rights. In 2019, she told The Guardian this. We all different anyway, in kind of a way, in you know, in life, in high testosterone, of course I do have it, so what? And we should note that all Olympians banned under what's now known as the Semenya rule have also been black cis women born in Africa. Okay, so it's not just sexist, that makes it racist as well. The United Nations Human Rights Council has told countries to oppose policies that might put pressure on athletes to undergo unnecessary medical procedures meant to reduce hormone levels. Semenya has taken drugs for that very reason, but she's vowed never to do that again because of the physical and emotional side effects. Meanwhile, the International Olympic Committee has permitted trans athletes to compete since 2004. The first openly transgender athletes like Laurel Hubbard competed at this year's Olympics in Tokyo, but the individual sports governing body decides who qualifies for specific events. Sports writer Brittany De La Cretes told LGBTQ Nation that World Athletics has a significantly lower testosterone level required than most of the other governing bodies. She said it was, quote, designed for trans women to police who can be considered a woman and compete against women. And that policing is what we got to put an end to, whether it be kids in school or world athletes competing for gold. In recent news, some students of Valor Christian High School recently protested by walking out because their high school coach was fired for being gay. On Instagram, Anok Tonga claimed that the administration had pressured him to leave after learning about his sexual orientation. The campus pastor and athletic director asked Tonga to come by after practice. They repeatedly asked him if he had any changes in lifestyle, and eventually they directly asked him if he had ever posted anything online about being gay. Tonga was honest. Yes, he's gay and he has posted about his life and advocated for the LGBTQ community whenever possible. The school saw this as a danger to the students. Tonga told local reporters 
orders, that's something that he'll never understand. Ultimately, they gave him a choice, denounce being gay and continue coaching, or step away from the school until he was willing to accept God and their help. In the end, Tonga stepped away from the school. His story is going viral and he's getting all the support he deserved all along. But the sad thing is, this is not a rare and unique story. Former lacrosse coach Lauren Bremer also posted an Instagram alleging that she was called in for a similar meeting after someone anonymously reported that she was in a relationship with another woman. Bremer lied and continued coaching, but eventually felt she could no longer remain in the school. She resigned in 2020 and said that she was not allowed to tell her students the truth about why she was leaving. Valor released a statement that said its faculty and staff must live in accordance with the Christian beliefs as outlined in its statement of beliefs. But Tonga sees no disconnect. He told CBS Denver, To me, the God I believe in welcomes and loves you. Gay, straight, black, Asian, whatever. And thankfully, the students see it that way too. When they walked out in protest, the students carried pride flags, signs reading, we want our coach back, and even messages rooted in the Christian values from Jesus loves Anok to love thy neighbor. And after posting this to Instagram, the story is still making numerous national headlines. We hope the coach finds the community that he is indeed to be a part of and gets the support that he needs. Finally, nothing can stop us from memorializing trans activist and icon Marsha P. Johnson, not even a pandemic. Last Wednesday, a group erected a bust of Marsha P. Johnson in Christopher Park on what would have been her 76th birthday. The location in New York is also significant because it's where Johnson launched the modern LGBTQ movement as one of the most prominent figures of the 1969 Stonewall Uprising. Joining in the commemoration were transgender advocate and co-founder of the Trans Student Educational Resources, Eli Ehrlich, and sculptor and sex worker Jesse Pelota, who are both pivotal in finally making this happen. Ehrlich told Gay City News that the delay goes much further than COVID delays, underscoring that the city has not yet erected a single sculpture with the $10 million it received in 2018 for the She Built NYC program, which is intended to erect statues of women in history. As trans people, Eric said, we knew we had to take matters into our own hands if we wanted to remember such a profoundly impactful figure like Marsha. A statue sculpted by the white straight artist George Siegel was erected in 1992 right near the new bust. It features two pairs of men and women painted a stark white and is meant to commemorate the Stonewall Uprising. Okay, talk about whitewashing history. Last year, two unknown activists also adorned the Gay Liberation Monument with wigs and flowers and painted them brown. They likewise left a sign reading, Black and Latina trans women led the riots. Stop whitewashing. And as a trans woman of color, Marsha was not only a leader in the Stonewall Uprisings, but also started a shelter for LGBTQ youth and sex workers and was an active and vocal supporter of gay and trans rights. The bust includes Johnson's signature accessory, a flower crown, and is engraved with one of her quotes. History isn't something you look back at and say it was inevitable. It happens because people make decisions that are sometimes very impulsive and of the moment, but those moments are cumulative realities. And sculptor Jessie Pelota posted her work on Instagram saying this. It was a gift to be able to sculpt Marsha and only a small way to say thank you to all the black trans women who have paved the way for my life and the lives of other queer and sex workers. Honestly, I want to take a trip to New York now and it's great to see she's getting the credit she finally deserves. That is true. And that does it for Culture Q this week. I'm Cheryl Lazar. And I'm Andy Luwani signing off. Be sure to catch us every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, live and on demand right here on Reverie. We'll see you next week.